I've very recently finished my Skillshare course, which I recorded on my phone sitting in the office at home. It was a great process because what I was able to do was talk to screen and actually find ways to be enthusiastic about it and share ideas about the process that I go through every day writing. You know, I'm on the terrace outside on the first floor of the Octavio Paz bookshop in Mexico City. It's a lovely place, it's one of my favourite bookshops, a very large bookshop, but on the first floor is a fabulous terrace coffee shop with a nice green balcony area and fresh air, afternoon breezes. It's close to a very large shopping centre which has got restaurants and coffee shops and plenty of bars and retail clothing stores. But here in the Octavio Paz bookshop, it's a haven of peace and tranquility. I'm here to work again on my latest manuscript, which is taking me quite a while to edit. I'm doing physical edits today and then updating those into my iPad device. And it's a great process. I've just been to a second-hand bookshop next door and I've managed to pick up a book I had years ago when I lived in Mexico. It's called Backpacking in Mexico and Central America, a guide for walkers and naturalists. At 40 minutes from my house here in Coyoacan is the closest access point to the mountain range that circles the whole city. And I'm going there at the weekend. I found it almost impossible to get the equivalent of an ordnance survey map here. Obviously that's the system that we use in England to track and calculate and identify all the landscape elements and the buildings and the features of the land if you go for a walk in the United Kingdom. And it is great, it is helpful. But cartography here in Mexico City today seems to have gone almost totally online. I like the aesthetic of paper maps. So I'm hoping to get hold of some of those fairly soon. I've requested some on order and those will come over to me from the UK. But the idea that I can use something like this, I mean this book was written in 1982, and what will be great is the opportunity to use this book and go on some weekend walks out in the country, up into the mountains, and to experience some of the forested landscape that surrounds this amazing city. But talking about being here in Mexico City, in the suburb where I live, there are very few other non-Mexicans. The municipal area of Coyoacan is quite large. It's several kilometres across in each direction, from east to west and north to south. And of course, the famous aspects of Coyoacan are places like the houses of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera, but also a phenomenal number of galleries and freelance working hub sites. There is a, a great coffee group called Tierra Garat, who has, I think, three branches in Coyoacan. And I like to write in those because all the venues have got good access to PowerPoints. The coffee is great quality and very good value. And of course, there are some small independent libraries. There's one in the town hall, and it literally is five metres square. It's probably got 2,000 books in it and enough seating for six or seven people. But it's too tiny for me to go in and work in on a regular basis every day. So I, by preference, am using coffee shops the vast majority of time that I'm here. And for me, that works really well. If you're thinking of coming to Mexico City and working here on a freelance basis or as a remote worker for an organisation that could be anywhere in the world, it is a great place. One of the things that you can do is join various Facebook groups and meetup groups for access to other people who speak your own language. And I do enjoy that, maybe once a month, getting out and about to meet a couple of other people. But one of the things I am considering doing is setting up a meetup group called Shut Up and Write. Shut Up and Write is a concept that I've really enjoyed. I used it three years ago in England to write a book. And what happened is we would meet as a group in an independent coffee shop. We'd all be there for a quarter to six or ten to six. The hour hand would move around on the clock. And at six o'clock, the host of that particular group, she would say to us, shut up and write. And we knew exactly what it meant. It wasn't offensive in any way at all. It was our instruction to pick up our iPads and our wireless keyboards or to grab paper and pens and start the process of writing. Our, our slot in that particular coffee shop was one hour. We would meet there every two weeks, but I went until I could finish a particular project. But I think the real value of it for me was meeting up with another group of writers or journalists 
or people who wanted to write poetry or create pamphlets. And we would basically be declaring ourselves as a writing group in a public space. It wasn't like other writing groups I had belonged to in the past, only two other writing groups where we would be led by a course tutor or a facilitator for the meeting. And we would go through the process of sharing what we had written in the intervening time between each monthly meeting. There was one particular group where we would meet in the public library once a month and we would share with the group what we had written. That might mean reading a three or four minute excerpt from a novel, reading out an entire poem, reading a section from a guidebook that somebody was working on. Someone else was writing a series of funny, comical short stories about life as the wife of a farmer on a small holding in the Yorkshire Dales. And that was always hilarious and we loved hearing the stories, but it was a strange process because we never talked about the actions of writing. The shut up and write model is quite commonly used and in place on meetup groups around the world. So if you look at the meetup website and you search shut up and write and you'll find a group that will be meeting up somewhere regularly close to where you live or where you are based. But the idea that you will write to a certain block of time and then stop and then chat and have more authorly or book related conversations together, I love it. It's a brilliant idea and I would recommend it to you as something that you could get enthusiastic about and join relatively easily.